Today, I'm, I'm going to talk about scammers on how we track them on by the streams and caught by the graphs. Um, it's a talk for NDC that I prepared on a, based on a project that I did. It's a simple use case of it. Um, my name is Debra Kusan. I worked at Open Credo as lead consultant. I published a book on GraphML. You can download with the link, which is free, and a small ebook uh, about graph machine learning algorithms. You can find me at Twitter. I'm vegan for the last seven years, still on, still happy. There is a negative sign there. I'm not a good cook. I've managed to burn my hands with second degree, so definitely, definitely not a good cook. That I have my certification kind of done, um, and has nothing to do with the talk. Uh, you can trust me on the presentation. Um, the topic we want to kind of go through this three part. The first one is fraud. I don't know if you have ever been part of it. Return fraud, the scammers we are talking about a very subset of the big fraud ecosystem. It's one of the most significant um, loss for retailers. And you may say, why do I care if some big companies losing or earning some money? Why do I help them? It does impact us because they change their policies. They change their return policies so that uh, some of us are going to be rejected or our right to be able to return the items can be changed in the future if we don't take action. Also, they change the selling prices of items for a higher price to be able to cover that difference, which is also impacting our budget. So why do we have to pay for extra for the probability of that those items are going to be um, subject to return fraud? The second one is when we can identify those um, bad actors near real time rather than as it happens right now at the warehouses when the return happens or the refund process starts. The people at the warehouse actually um, tag the items, find out if it's a eligible, a valid return or not, and then they close the accounts as a batch process, which is very um, traditional way of dealing with things, but we can change this in a smarter way. And the last one is about graph algorithms. Um, I don't know if anyone has ever used them or heard of them. They are alternative or very linked to machine learning algorithms. There are so many other machine learning algorithms can do animal detection or other kind of things. But graph algorithms, I'm biased, are a good way. Alternatives because they explore complexity and they do online social network analysis in a very effective way. Um, so what is return, return fraud? It's act of returning merchandise to a retailer for a refund in violation of the merchant's stated returns policy. Just in 2020, it was 6% of the total return, which cost 25 billion in one year. So it's a very significant number for the retailers to take care of it. And you may come across some news as well, I don't know, like there are multiple ways of um, people do this. The first one is fake product return. So the and most popular one is the iPhone cases filled with sand and returned with the same weight. So that um, the, it was, I think, the 300k with shipment filled with dirt, but they are filling with sand and other things to make sure that the return process, and they managed to get away with it, kind of in early days. The other one is breaking, where they order high value electronic items and they pull apart, take the most valuable parts and then return it and sell those parts on other uh, markets. And another one is wardrobing that you buy an item um, just for a single night, or it could be for a conference with the tax, you return the item with full, full, full price. So we don't know kind of what the accounts are doing. They actually return the items. They close the accounts as the first thing, um, suspicious accounts. They close the family accounts. Um, and what's happening, it's impacting us as well. So bad people somehow come to us and um, 
what we can do is actually close an account is not a solution, as Teresa showed us how the API design can work. We can, with a couple of lines, write a code and create multiple accounts. So it not account create, uh, closing, I think it's not the best way. It's We should be a bit smarter with that. The usual standard is you order, you create an account, you order, you return the item, and you refund. Right now, right now, we take action to close the accounts if we believe that refund is not eligible. What we can do a bit smarter is to identify if the return is eligible. So this is where we kind of do do machine learning algorithms, look at the product, the value of the product. So we have rules, so set of rules, history of the customer, and for items above a certain value, we can reject with a policy or make it harder to return. And the best way is to be able to identify the account creation. So we have to be able to do it at the first when it happened. So how we do it? OK, there are streams coming uh, because it's near real time. We want to catch this um, for each account. We can calculate the risk group and accept or reject the account creation. Um, it does require a near real system because we don't want to take up that sign up process to be long. And each account, we can publish the details as an event. It could be from your APIs, um, front end systems, or streaming sources like Spark or Flink. Um, and you may say that, hold on a sec, all those machine learning algorithms and models, they take ages for the feature engineering, the technical depth we are talking about. It's such a um, hard process that I'm not, um, am I going to suggest that we have solved all the problems? I may suggest looking at data mesh. I don't know if you have been through or you have done your journey with it, but with the data mesh, you should be able to publish your data product with trustworthy data, so it is very important what type of data you are publishing, that new account, whatever that item um, is being used. So that does help the trustworthiness of the data and being able to reuse and machine learning algorithms. Doesn't have to think about the feature engineering as they used to, so it's kind of one caveat that may help. The next one is, OK, we have accounts, and I'm going to search for the accounts, similar accounts. I have one table, in a sense, if I condense everything into one. If you find yourself writing multiple join queries, or you are using um, long paths through your data journey, then it means that actually you may need to think it again, because you don't want to self joins self queries to your table again and again. Just one table similar to other items. It is, a, as I said, graph problem. But if you are not convinced, let's look at the graphs. They are the representational model. Any relationship between two entities. So it's very natural, very intuitive. The way we talk, we, they, the way we think is actually very graph oriented. They are everywhere. It's a challenge. Um, if you have searched for NBC today, the top result is the PageRank algorithm, supported with other algorithms, of course, but what made Google, Google was the PageRank algorithm, and that's the top result is a graph algorithm, which is a centrality algorithm, and the top part comes so that you don't have to leave Google website, they earn a bit more money, um, with the details that you know where it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, <laughs> So you don't have to navigate and jump to the next link. It is the knowledge graph. It's a search engine behind the scenes. It's also a knowledge graph based on the graph algorithm. So it's very effective, actually, you are using every day. Or if you have searched for how to come to Queen Elizabeth Center too, it's also Google Maps is using shortest path algorithm. There are so many other variations. But path algorithm is also a graph algorithm. So they are in your daily life, even if you haven't noticed. So back to our problem. I have account. An account may have IP address, email, phone, and address. So how do we get this? This is a very easy model. Instead of the relational database model, I have to put everything into the columns and map them. Um, this gives us actually a bit immutable system so that any change, any need node, I should be able to update. Um, and extensively 
add new values, labels to the account. What happens if I have four accounts, if they share any address, any um, email addresses, IP addresses, phone numbers, then I can query the graph database easily and get the relationships. It's by nature thinking each column you have, it's actually a table. So the relationships between data items becomes the first class system. <laughs> you can query those relationships, the IP addresses, mobile addresses. So it's the next level, next dimension to your existing relational database table. So what do I do if I want to get the account to create? I create, this is the simple JSON um, for the event payload. Then I create my account. The tricky part is each one, each node, it, each property needs to be created one kind of by each um, node. And then we will create those nodes, relationships, and lives in the graph database. And lastly, what do I get back? is the community detection. So it's another algorithm that we can run on the graph database and write back with finding out what's the relationship with which community they belong to. And we can identify that which one kind of, or the new user is member of those groups or not. So that we can either reject or accept account creation and solve the problem in a simple way. Thank you for listening. <laughs>